Hi divers, my name is Ben, I'm GOE instructor and in this video I explain to you if you can take a GOE class as a smoker, spoiler, you can't, and especially why this is the case, why smoking is bad especially for divers and what science says about it, coming up. Welcome back guys, welcome back to 2021, which already started kind of crazy with Buffalo storming the US Capitol, lockdowns prolonged, but this channel reached 1000 subscribers, which is really crazy. I didn't ever imagine to get an audience this big and that's great. Thank you all for this. You are awesome. Anyway, the topic of this video is smoking in regards to diving and especially technical diving. GOE is one of the few, if not the only, scuba diving association that prohibits smoking at all among its members. In the GOE standards, being a non-smoker is a prerequisite for the participation in every class. But why has GOE this rule? Sure, smoking is a bad habit and not healthy at all. Overall, anyone would agree that smoking increases the risk for different types of cancer and other lung diseases. But does it have implications for the diving itself? Do smokers more often experience accidents when diving? And if so, which kinds of accidents? There are some scientific studies available. The first one I'd like to mention is this one. The title is Pulmonary Function in Military Divers, Smoking Habits and Physical Fitness Training Influence. This paper was published in 2006 in Military Medicine. The authors measured the pulmonary function of 57 professional military divers of the Croatian Navy, separated by gender and smoking habits. They found that regular smoking has a negative effect on the pulmonary function, mainly the large airway functions. But they also speculated that regular physical training, like active professional military divers do several times a week, can decrease the negative effects of smoking. So does that mean you can smoke if you train enough? Most likely not. Smoking will have a negative effect on the pulmonary function. Let's keep in mind that this study focused on military divers. The median age was around 25 years and as soldiers, physical training was more or less their main job. Looking into my YouTube channel statistics, the main age group here on the channel is 10 to 20 years older and I think this resembles very well the standard technical diver. According to the study, Croatian military divers participate in an extensive basic and specific physical fitness training, including weight training two to three times a week with 45 to 60 minutes each session, plus endurance training like running, swimming, stationary cardio training with 45 to 60 minutes per training session two to three times a week, and two to four dives a week. I doubt that most of us are hitting the gym that often and intensely. A comparable result was found by a study conducted at the German Naval Medical Institute. They found that lung function, in this case the so-called FEV1, literally the amount of air that can be exhaled in one second, did not decline in non-smoking divers, but in smoking divers over time, which brought them to the conclusion that, let me cite, smoking cessation is advised for divers. So, for most of us to preserve pulmonary function, 
would be to stay away from tobacco. A lower pulmonary function might lead to a less efficient gas exchange, and it's no miracle that this could potentially lead to increased CO2 levels, which can cause a strong gas narcosis and might trigger oxygen intoxications. A less efficient gas exchange might lead as well to decompression problems, since the removal of gas from the body during decompression dives might be negatively affected. A study conducted in 2010 at the Long Beach Memorial Medical Center, Long Beach, California, looked right into this. The authors investigated whether differences exist between chronic cigarette smokers and non-smokers under normal baric and hyperbaric conditions. They followed two hyperbaric protocols. Under protocol A, the participants breathe oxygen at 2 ATA between one half and three hour periods. While in protocol B, they utilized intermittent air breaks and measured the gas tensions of CO2 and nitrogen in skeletal muscle and subcutaneous tissues. The conclusions of this study were clear. Smokers release nitrogen from muscle skeletal tissue more slowly than non-smokers during hyperbaric oxygen exposures under the protocols used. That means even while breathing oxygen at 280A, which is higher than the oxygen partial pressure used during technical diving decompression stops, the off-gassing of nitrogen is slower in smokers. This could lead to more frequent or severe cases of decompression sickness or even other accidents. But do smokers have more frequent accidents or are accidents of smokers more severe? There is a very interesting PhD thesis from 2012 written by Miriam Elizabeth Armstrong with the title Smoking and Risk-Taking in Recreational Scuba Divers that assessed whether recreational divers who smoke are more likely to experience a diving-related incident compared to non-smokers. She investigated a whole bunch of possible incidents like decompression illness, panic attacks, ear damage and so on. I cannot go through every detail of this work, but the, in my opinion, most important findings were First, decompression illness. Great news for smokers, Armstrong could not find any statistically significant correlations of smoking and decompression illness. Although it's not more likely for a smoker to experience DCI, however, a study from 2003 found that smoking does not predispose DCI, but if a DCI incident occurs, heavy and light smokers develop more severe symptoms compared to non-smokers. Second, Armstrong found a positive correlation between hypothermia and smoking. Hypothermia is a far less common condition than hypothermia, although it is responsible for a number of deaths. Divers are particularly at risk of hyperthermia when waiting around on the surface in their suits, especially in warm regions. Hypothermia is known to reduce the efficiency of tissue perfusion in divers and it is possible that this effect could be compounded in divers who smoke by the greater risk of tissue ischemia associated with smoking. This is especially a thing for my instructor colleagues who smoke, because as an instructor you might spend some time waiting for students in the sun. Third, and this finding really surprised me, was that Armstrong found a significant relationship between cigarette smoking and having a panic attack. This is a big thing, especially in technical diving, because having a panic attack on a serious trimix dive or during wreck or cave penetration will most likely lead to death of the diver. 
The question is, why do smoking divers have more panic attacks underwater? Well, this question is discussed by Armstrong and is not completely clear. Maybe smoking makes the diver more prone to panic attacks in general. Maybe people who tend to panic attacks are more likely to start smoking in the first place. Maybe to cope with anxiety. Maybe the temporary cessation from nicotine, which is a psychic drug, leads to a higher tendency to develop panic attacks. Another possible explanation the author did not mention is that divers who smoke have a lower FEV1, as mentioned before. Therefore, it might be harder for them to exhale CO2, especially when breathing high-density breathing mixes like air below 30 meters slash 100 feet. The CO2 buildup might lead to anxiety that can result in panic. Anyway, we do not really know what exactly causes the panic attacks. All we know from the study is that there is a correlation. That a smoking dive buddy is more likely to experience a panic attack. And this is something to avoid, especially for cave divers and technical divers. Finally, Armstrong investigated the severity of diving-related incidents. As a measure for severity, she took the number of days away from work or daily activities after an incident. She found a relationship between smoking and the total severity of diving-related illnesses, meaning that any diving-related illness is more severe in divers with daily cigarette consumption compared to non-smokers. This is not surprising, since we already know from other studies that smokers have worse outcomes after injuries. Another interesting point in the last years is the question whether vaping is allowed, since it does not use tobacco. There is not much data available. All we currently know is that vaping is at least as bad as smoking, especially if you use black market liquids. And there seems to be a higher percentage of people, especially young people, who use e-cigarettes, ending up with smoking more frequent and heavier smoking of tobacco within six months. There are some studies available about the risk of vaping at e-cigarettes. I put the links in the description below. So coming back to the initial topic of the video, GOE's non-smoking policy. What the available data shows is that it makes sense. It is not a question of discouraging smokers from their desire or that GOE wants to interfere with people's private lives. Even if some people claim this, GOE is not the smoking police or some kind of moralizer. It's a question of maximum team efficiency. GOE is involved in international projects with multinational teams and as an organization always strives to minimize unnecessary risks for all team members. And one of the most obvious risks is smoking. And to smoke as a member of a highly capable dive team doing some serious technical dives is not just a personal decision. If this decision means that team members are put at unnecessary risk. Sure, one might say, and I hear this sometimes from smokers who are interested in a GOE class, that they do not do serious technical dives and they just want to do MDL dives to 21 meters max. Yeah, maybe the reduced risk of this kind of dives would allow a diver to be a smoker. But you have to draw a red line and GOE prefers to paint its red lines a little lower than too high. In addition, it's easier to exclude all smokers from training in general than certain divers who smoke from certain dives or projects. And of course, this policy is a statement. 
it reminds divers that diving, especially technical and cave diving, is not just breathing underwater. It is a lifestyle that includes living healthy. Another important question is, who is a smoker? Is a person a smoker who smokes one cigarette a year? Two cigarettes? Ten? You see, this question is hard to answer. I know many people who stopped smoking to become a GOE diver. But when is a former smoker considered to be a non-smoker? After a month? After a year? After ten years? I know people who started smoking again after they stopped for 15 years and some people say, after you started smoking, you will never be a true non-smoker again. And sure, there are people who regularly smoke and just stop for the few days of the class and if these divers are not in my community, I won't find it out. Since it's hard to find strict rules for that, I personally talk to people about their smoking habit before the class and I always make sure they understand by hiding their smoking habit from me. They are not screwing me or GOE, but in the last consequence, themselves and their future buddies. If you are a smoker and you feel GOE is the right path for you, make a decision. Is smoking worth stopping you from making great experiences underwater? If it's worth, okay, go for it. I'm the last person telling people how to live their lives. But you can't be a Jewy diver by standards then. But if you decide that smoking should not stop you from becoming a Jewy diver, from making great experiences and from learning amazing things, stop smoking before, honestly and truly. I never smoked, so I do not have any experience with smoking cessation. But many people I know who stopped finally read the book Alan Carr's Easy Way to Stop Smoking. I put a link in the description below. So what do you think? Is GOE's non-smoking policy a bit over the top or do you think it makes sense? Are you a current smoker who wants to stop smoking to start a GOE class? Or are you a former GOE diver who quit GOE because of smoking? I would love to read your experiences in the comments. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, ring the bell and watch my other videos.